And amen. We are blessed. Um, you know, the songs we sang tonight, count your blessings. You know, the blessings we have, we've been pardoned. We have a Savior. We have grace greater than our sins. And no matter what mountain comes into our life, we can always face it through Jesus Christ. Amen. But I'd say the best of all blessings would have to be in Matthew chapter 19. Um, verse number 16, Matthew 19, verse number 16. A young man comes asking Jesus about eternal life. You know, the greatest blessing we have is eternal life. It's a gift from God. I wrote this around Christmas time. I wasn't sure I was preaching. But, you know, Christmas morning, I got up. I gave Olivia her gift. She got a body pillow. It's like this massively, overly large body pillow. Just a pillow to sleep on. I thought it was boring, but she loves it. She uses it every night. She says it helps her back. I don't know. She loves it. I got some earbuds, which I love. I got some joggers to wear around the house and just some, this is really boring. I can't believe I reached this point in my life. I got office supplies for back there for studying. Do you know how boring that is? Yes. I got office supplies. That's so lame. But I loved it. I was excited about office supplies. Anyways, you know, the different gifts we got around Christmas, since then you've been given a gift. Nothing can ever compare to the gift of eternal life that we have. Yeah. So this young man comes up to Jesus. Look at Matthew chapter 19. Look at verse number 16. He says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He says, What can I do to have eternal life? Let's pray tonight. God, as we come into your presence today, Lord, just thank you so much that we get to come to you, just sing for your glory, just be free to come pray, to worship you, Lord. And I pray tonight that's what we do, just learn about you, worship you, just that. And all we do, you be magnified, not me, not any of us, but... That we just see you tonight. Just speak to us. And if one here doesn't have eternal life, Lord, I pray you give it to him tonight. Okay, so Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Super exciting. You know, somebody got saved this morning. It's super amen. awesome. Parker got saved. I'm super proud of it. It's awesome. You got me crying now. It's all right. <laughs> you know, if you're not saved tonight, you can have eternal life too, okay? That's right. So tonight, this young man comes up to Jesus. 2,000 years ago, this young man comes up to Jesus. He says, good master, what good thing shall I do to inherit eternal life? Well, so what do we have to do to inherit eternal life? Well, first off, just eternal life is something to be desired. This young man was desiring to have eternal life. You know, he said, good master, I want to have eternal life. What do I have to do to have this eternal life? So he had a desire in his heart. Think about other people in the Bible that were saved. Think about Nicodemus. He came to Jesus at night just to talk to him. He says in John chapter 3, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus came to Nicodemus, wondering about Jesus, about his eternal life. The woman at the well, John 4, 13 to 15. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. So he tells her, look, if you drink of this water from this well she's sitting at, you're going to get thirsty again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, the water from Jesus, shall they'll never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. She desired eternal life. It's something to be desired. Amen. And lastly, the Philippian jailer, Paul hit this Wednesday, Sunday, I don't remember exactly when, but he desired eternal life. Remember it says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the God, and the prisoners, praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. So they've been out witnessing, Lydia gets saved in Philippi. And then they go on, and they're in the marketplace, and this demon-possessed lady gets saved, and her demon flees her, but now her masters have no gain. So they throw Paul and Silas in jail, and Paul and Silas are just in there singing. So this big earthquake comes, and all night this jailer heard these two guys singing. I imagine that would be super, super annoying on the part of the jailer. You know, there's these prisoners just get thrown in jail, and these, these two guys are just in there chilling, just singing singing praises to God, even though they've been thrown in jail. But then when this earthquake comes, the jailer assumes that all the prisoners have fleed, he starts to kill himself. But Paul says, wait, don't kill yourself, we're all still here. Then he, the, the prisoner, or the jailer, called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. 
and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He desired eternal life. So they each had a desire after hearing about Christ. Nicodemus had seen his miracles. The woman at the well had heard Christ's teaching. And the Philippian jailer had seen the testimony lived out through Paul and Silas. You know, so each of us, once we hear the gospel, each person, once they hear the gospel to get saved, there must be a desire. It's something to be desired. Right. Do you know how I knew what Olivia wanted for Christmas? Because she talked about this body pillow forever. Okay? This big pillow, she had one for years, and it got wore out. She's like, it's not helping at night, it's not comfortable. She just talked about it over and over again. So I knew what to get her. But if we go out, we bring God's word down to Lancaster, to Amanda, wherever we live, and tell people about Jesus, once they hear about it enough, God is working in their heart. They can have a desire if we bring it up to them enough. But eternal life is something to be desired, and it's something God has promised. 1 John 2.25, And this is the promise that he hath promised unto us, even eternal life. Titus 1, 1 1-4, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, According to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. So Paul is writing to Titus in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, excuse me, promised before the world began. Before the world began, God promised us eternal life. It's something God has promised. In John 4, 14, Jesus told the woman at the well, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You know, once you get saved, we have that water springing up, a gift that keeps giving, it keeps coming on. We have eternal life in us because God has saved us. John 3, 36, after he talks to Nicodemus, he says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. If If you're saved, you believe on Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So we have God's word so that we're able to have eternal life. You know, Brother Maddox said it a couple minutes ago when he was praying. He said, God gave us his son, and his son shed his blood for us so we can have eternal life. Right. Jesus gave it all, all to him we owe. You know, sin may have left that crimson stain in us, but Christ washed us white as snow. Amen. Eternal life is something to be desired. If you're desiring tonight, don't worry, because God has promised it through Jesus Christ. Eternal life is in and through Jesus Christ. We know the Bible, we know through the Bible, this is what Papa hit on so hard this morning, through the Bible you can know that you have eternal life. John 5.39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify to me. John 6.54, this is a strange way of putting it, but Jesus had all these disciples following him, a ton of people following him in John chapter 6. And he says, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, what is he saying here? You have to partake of my salvation. It's only right. through Christ. You know, we went over to Mama and Papa's house earlier. Jane made the food. I think a couple other people brought stuff. But the food, we partook of it. It was from Dana. We partook of it. If you don't go to Christ and partake of his salvation, you have to go to Christ to get it. You can't have eternal life. And after right. Jesus said this, it went down back down to the twelve. Just the twelve disciples following him. You know, Jesus is the only source of eternal life. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man can go to the Father, can go to heaven, except through Christ. Eternal life is in and through Jesus Christ. It comes through knowing Jesus. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the gift of eternal life. Um, other verses, John 1, 1 to 3, mentions eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. So John says here, that which is from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. So he says, from the beginning, we've heard, we've seen, we've looked at, and our hands have handled of the word of life. But that word of life is capital W. If you look in John chapter 1, John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 1, whenever you see a capital W word of life, Jesus Christ, it is talking about Jesus Christ. If he's talking about Jesus, we've seen him, we've heard that, I'm sorry about the light, y'all, we'll get that fixed, I apologize. But it says, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it in bear witness, and showing to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, 
and was manifested unto us. Jesus Christ is eternal life. Jesus Christ, you can only get through him. He is right. eternal life. First John 5, 11, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. If you have Jesus, you have eternal life. Amen. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. For this is the true God. Jesus Christ is the true God in eternal life. Jesus Christ is eternal life. So you say, all right, Micah, I'm desiring salvation. I know God has promised but it's only through eternal life. All you have to do then is just have simple faith. Eternal life is received by simple faith. Paul, Paul hit this verse this morning too. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born. So once, you're, once you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you believe on him, you're born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but you're born of God. Amen. Once you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, just simply believing in Him, you can have eternal life. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, when I got saved, this camera, I'm trying to think where I can walk and still be on the camera. When I got saved, it was right about here. I came up, I looked at my mom, I was sitting back, right behind Larry, I think right around there. And I said, Mom, I want to get saved. So she took me up here, we prayed. I don't remember every word I said. I don't remember everything. Harper, you just got saved this morning. Do you remember every single word you said? Right? I don't remember every word I said. But I know I put my faith in Jesus Christ in it. So when I got saved, it was not a thing thing I did. I did absolutely nothing. I just showed up and received eternal life by accepting Jesus Christ as my Savior. Amen. And you know, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. If we got saved on our own, we would tell everybody about it. Which we should anyways, but we brag about ourselves. But since we're saved, not of our own works, but of faith, we boast on Jesus Christ. We tell others that eternal life can be received just by believing in Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. You can't be saved in any other name except believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal life is simply by believing on Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I know I'm not saying nothing new, I'm just basically just reading scripture, but Jesus Christ says you can have eternal life. The Bible, this book right here, teaches us we can have the gift of eternal life. Right. It's just that, it's a gift, simply receiving it by faith. You know what I did to get my gifts Christmas morning? I opened it, and I took it. Those earbuds were mine. Those office supplies, they were mine. Everything that was given to me, I just took it. To accept, this, to accept Jesus Christ as Savior, you just take his gift. Just accept it. Right. You don't have to tie to the church. You don't have to pay all your money. You don't have to go yeah. run 200 miles, do backflips, speak in tongues. You have to do nothing. You just have to believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. And I'm sorry, I'm getting excited, which means my English is absolutely terrible. I apologize. I can hear my mom saying, this is not right. I'm trying. <laughs> but Acts 13, 48. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and the glorified the word of the Lord. As many were ordained to eternal life, believed. They glorified God when they were saved because they believed. As we said in the Philippian jailer, Paul and Silas, they said unto him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on Jesus. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever, anybody, that calls upon the name of the right. Lord shall be saved. If you want to be saved, just simply accept Christ by believing on him. Amen. And this is the record, 1 John 5, 11 to 13. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life. Yeah. Papa hit this. You can know you have eternal life by believing on him. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. Eternal life is a present possession. You know, it's not like, all right, I accepted Jesus Christ. 
So now one day I'm going to have eternal life. No, your life starts now. That's right. The second you get saved, you have a new life. You have eternal life. You say, but Micah, I'm still going to die. That's a physical death. You'll be separated from your body, but you'll never again, death means separation, you'll never again be separated from God. Right. When God told Adam and Eve, if you eat of this tree of the garden, you're going to die. He meant spiritual death. Between them and God, there would be separation. So once we have eternal life, we'll never again be separated from Jesus Christ. Amen. We may die physically, we may be separated from this body, but you know what? We'll always be with Jesus Christ. Eternal life is a present possession. That's right. And eternal life is to be laid hold on. Paul told Timothy twice in 1 Timothy 6, 12 and 1 Timothy 6, 19. He told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. It said in verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. You know, when we're going through our day, lay hold on eternal life. When something's going wrong, just think about, you know what, this day is kind of annoying, it's driving me crazy, but you have eternal life. Your world's going crazy. Tony mentioned Ukraine earlier. That's insane. Like, and that could happen to us at any point in time, but you know we have eternal life. Whatever you're going through, that someone's indicating fire out of you at work. This is going wrong, that's going wrong. You have eternal life. So think about that. And then when people are driving you crazy, do they have eternal life? You know, we can tell them. Lay hold on eternal life. Think about it throughout the day. Dwell on it, meditate on it. Let that be your motivation to keep going on. <clears throat> and lastly, eternal life is something to be desired. But when you desire it, God has promised to give it to you through faith in Jesus Christ. It's of Jesus Christ, it's received by faith. Once you're saved, it's a present possession. We need to lay hold on and think about it all day long. But simply, lastly, eternal life, it's eternal. John 10, 27 to 28. You can't ever lose it. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Once you're saved, you're in Jesus Christ's hand. Amen. He's keeping you safe. And you know what? His Father, which gave them to him, is greater than all. You say, well, what if I decide to do wrong? Well, you're not greater than God. If you decide to do wrong, you can't get yourself out of God's hand. God's greater than you. Simply, right. you can't get out of salvation. God is greater than us all. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus has you saved. God has you saved. So if you've desired salvation, God promised it to you through his son by believing on him. You have it, think about it, no one can ever take it from you. But if you don't, you're thinking, Micah, I would love to have it. I know God has promised the eternal life to me. Just believe on him tonight. Just put, simply put your faith on him. And you can walk out of here tonight knowing that even though the wages of your sin is death, you're supposed to go to the lake of fire. You know what? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. I know we're done with Christmas, it's over, but we have this gift of eternal life. And we, can, we can't give it to others, but we can tell others about it. We can get it for, we, they can get it for free, it's a gift. Anyone can be saved by simply believing on him. And if you're not saved tonight, just put your faith in him. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, if there's any need besides that tonight, feel free to come to an altar and pray. But if you need to be saved, please do so tonight. I believe most in here, if not all, are saved, but if not... Come before Christ tonight, accept Him as your Savior, just by believing on Him. As we stand, our heads are.